What's up guys, my name's Nate, welcome back to Real Steel Projects. Guys, it's a brand new day in the workshop. Um, where we left off yesterday on part one of the Viking Saber staff build, we got the majority of the metal work done and we got it painted, obviously. So we had got the, um, the piece cut, faced in the lathe, we formed up and welded in our collets up here. We drilled and tapped, so the blades have got their locking uh, grub screws. We did the etchings, the Viking runes, we did all the little lines and details, cut into the hilt, drilled the spot for the um, electronics. That's something that's going to be uh, obviously needed today. We'll, today we'll do the install for the electronics. And um, we painted the whole thing. So, yeah, hopefully you guys uh, watched the first episode. And if you did, I'd love to know down in the comments below what you thought of it. Because we are trying something new here with sort of a um, more vlog style, just chatting about things. And I had fun making the last one, so this is probably something we'll keep doing, um, keep that ball rolling while it is. But yeah, so today's goal is um, we're going to be putting the leather onto this electronics install, the blades will go in, and this one will be ready. We can do a bit of a showcase then, can wrap up and get shipped out to a customer. So let's not waste too much more time, we'll get straight into the leather work, and uh, this should start looking like a thing, hopefully fairly soon. All right, guys, so talking about leather, uh, these are the big three main types that I use here at Real Steel Projects. We actually get quite a few people asking um, what kind of leathers we use, and it seems like a good opportunity to show you sort of what we use. There's also one more type, which is a suede leather, but I just currently don't have any of that. That's um, used on our uh, Demon Blood Swords, so I'm sure in a later video, because I mean, I've got to build one of them next week anyway, I'll probably show you that leather then. But these are the, the three main. So speaking of those swords, we have this is, you can see, a pretty thick, this is what they call veg tan leather. It's just a, a general purpose tooling leather used for things like um, belts, uh, saddles, holsters, that kind of thing. Um, I use this for the, the scales, either side of the steel for like our Adventure Time swords. Um, I also have a few different things like I use it for, um, I've got some strips here cut, and these will eventually be uh, scabbards or sheaths um, for some of our swords. The cool thing about veg tan leather is it does take a pattern really well so you can tool in, you can mark in those little like uh, sort of engraving type of things into them. Um, it, you can also harden it so you can harden it with like boiling water or even just regular water you can like wet form uh, veg tan leather so for example with our swords once the sword blade goes in I soak the whole thing so all the leather so it's completely sopping wet and you can press in that sword shape and then as that leather dries it just holds that that shape so then when you pull the sword out there's some rigidity to it you know it's not just um it's not just floppy like it is here it, it, it gets some rigidity to it so the leather is awesome but it is um even in that state still too rigid for like um wrapping over a handle so then the next couple types we use is these are kangaroo skins so these are actually a really Fairly inexpensive, you can see this is a, a whole kangaroo minus the tail that would be here. It's a very fairly inexpensive thing for now. They're only about, about 60 Australian dollars for a whole skin. Now it is a lot thinner, you can probably see. It's probably only like maybe 1.5 millimeters thick. But the cool thing about kangaroo skin is it's really stretchy. It's, it's a, yeah, got this really good stretchy property to it. And for me, that's awesome because what I do on a lot of my handles is I put in those little um, bands that you can see on, hopefully I'll, I'll put in a picture of a sword here. And you see those little bands there. Um, with some different types of leathers, they just don't take that shape. So I would apply glue to this and then to the handle. I'd wrap this over the whole lot and then I bind it down with uh, some cord here, with this cord that I use. And that imprints that pattern into it. But uh, with other leathers, I find that they just, after a little while, that moves back out and then you don't get those fine little ridge lines like you do with this kangaroo skin. It's really, really exceptionally good for these handles. I'm going to be using it for this Viking Saber handle actually. Um, although this isn't going to have, this isn't going to have those little bumps, but uh, it's just really good to wrap over that. And then I've also got a black dyed version. You can buy this from this, um, I, I just get them off a, uh, I think he's in Victoria, a, um, a leather wholesaler here in Australia. This is a black dyed version and this is for like my Andrew handles and uh, you know, the, um, the Aaron Dites is another blade that I do with the, with the black leather and uh, it just saves me dying it myself. 
Um, for handles, I find the kangaroo leather is like the best that I've come across up to this stage at least. I'm also talking about leather, like it's a, a great way to dip your toe into this type of world. So you'd be surprised how even a really cheap basic prop can be elevated or even a really cheap basic lightsaber that you can buy like a Chinese lightsaber to really elevate the look of it with just um, a basic leather job. And um, I have no background working with leather, it's all self-taught, so I'm probably doing heaps of stuff wrong, but for what I do, it seems to work. Um, it, there seems like a steep barrier to entry when you're first looking at uh, leather work, but it's actually surprisingly fairly, uh, fairly beginner friendly. It's um, pretty inexpensive to buy, you know, four sheets to mess around with and play around. Then, then all you really need is razor blades, um, a good, you know, good quality razor blade. Leather does wear your blades down pretty fast, especially that thick veg tan leather. That really does wear down pretty fast. And then uh, you can normally buy for eBay like a kit of say a 50 piece kit that comes with just about all the basic tools for like under $30. You know, like these little slicking tools, uh, mine's been through quite a bit. And uh, I made a bigger version out of some nylon that does a similar sort of job. And then especially if you're working with the big thicker leather, these uh, snap rivets are uh, like a godsend. They're just a two piece rivet. You drill the hole through both bits of leather. One goes up, one goes down and you crush the two together and uh, it beats stitching. That's a long way to say that you don't have to spend tons of money to get involved in just having fun with building with props and stuff. Even if you buy off the shelf props, just a little bit of time and effort with leather can uh, elevate that to another level. Anyway, I'm wasting time. Let's get that leather on.
All right, guys, so now that we've given that leather a bit of time to set, you can see the dye is really taken to the cording and it's just changed a little bit of the texture on the leather itself. And it's also created these little dark spots in between, which is like a cool little extra touch to the weathering process. So you can kind of see as well, maybe a better angle of that, that rust effect that creates that kind of a Raptor paint type of feel to it. Really helps make those runes pop out and all the little details there. So we'll probably give the whole thing a light sanding um, a little bit later on in the process with uh, just some really fine scotch bright. Also, you can see electronics are installed now. There's that uh, standby button uh, lit up. We'll give it a quick test fire. You can see there's light that end and on that end. And hopefully the camera's picking up how loud that is. I'll just power it down. So we've got all the speaker holes hidden under this cordage here. So it goes straight through the leather and then it's just uh, wrapped up under there. So you don't see the speaker holes, but you still get that effect. Next up, it's time for the blade install. So once we put the blades in, this piece is gonna be finished. We can do some glamour shots of it then, take some photos of it, some video, and then it can be wrapped up and sent off to one of our customers. Be it for today's video. Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end. Really hope you're enjoying this uh, different type of video series that we're doing. Um, I've only done the first two episodes so far of doing like a, a follow along build vlog. For what that's worth, I just wanted to say that uh, I've actually enjoyed making this style of video. I've kind of enjoyed like yapping at you guys. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed following along with the process. Um, and hopefully you enjoyed seeing this thing come to fruition. These Viking sabers have been a bit of a game changer for us. We've done um, heaps of these now, probably over a hundred different Viking sabers, of different kinds. And the, uh, the double-ended staff style is always fun to make. I'm not very good at spinning around, as you could tell, but uh, there's definitely some people out there that are awesome at it. Make sure if you're not following to hit that subscribe button, because next week we're going to be doing, I think, probably three andrels. It's going to depend on uh, what I have in stock to do uh, two of them, but definitely one andrel. So I'll be making um, maybe a three-parter series, so it's a fairly long build. But it'd be great to bring you guys along and show you just how much is involved with them and why they're a little bit more pricey compared to some of the other things in the in the catalog. As always, guys, if you did enjoy the video, a like goes a massive way. It's uh, pretty crazy how YouTube treats you if you don't get likes per views. It's kind of a weird algorithm thing to crack, but um, we definitely notice that the videos that get likes, they get way more views. I would love to hit 250,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you're not following along, um, hitting subscribe would go a long way for helping me too. Leave a comment. As I said, we're coming to the end of the uh, build schedule. So I've got a few things I want to squeeze in there, but please tell me what you guys want to see me to make. Um, I'll be reading the comments on this video and the last one when that goes up and uh, definitely adding them to the build list. So let me know what you guys want to see made and I'll be sure to add that in. But that's going to do it for today, guys. So until next time, cheers.